Hello boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen and welcome to The Real Talk. Uh, if you're new to the channel, welcome. This is a platform for open-minded individuals to come together, share ideas, share their experiences so that we can learn from each other and grow as a society. So if you're new to the channel, please click on the subscribe button, like, share so that we can reach out to more people and hopefully more people can come on and share their ideas and experiences. Uh, introducing my guest today, he is a regular, he is my co-host, uh, Triv, welcome back. How are you doing, bro? I'm good, bro. It's good to be back on the channel. Um, we've, um, in Guangzhou, in China, we've just had our second wave, 146 people tested uh, positive for the for the virus so they've tested 19 million people twice here wow. in inside three weeks i think so they tested 19 million people at the start they've tested them now three weeks again later and hopefully uh if everything comes out clear we'll be uh, we'll be back up and running so yeah i'm good tired of being stuck inside um hoping uh next couple of days everything starts opening up again but yeah good to be back on the channel Oh, good, good, bro. Well, today we're not here to talk about coronavirus. We did do a video on it. So if you haven't watched it already, please check it out. It's on the channel. Put the link in the description. Today we will be talking about this term we all know of, we live in. It's called capitalism. Now, for those of you who might not be completely aware of what capitalism is, uh, it's described as free market, free choice, individualism. But in simple terms or from what I understand, it's actually the production of products, goods, services for profit in private hands. Now, Triv, what in your understanding, what, what do you what does capitalism mean to you? And it obviously it doesn't um, have to be a dictionary explanation. We're trying yeah. to to like explain it in our own words. Uh, yeah, look, for me, um, it's about the fact that people who have money are then able to take that money and make more money. Um, that's my non-Oxford definition uh, version of, uh, of capitalism. It's, um, it's people who have enough money to control prices, um, to control employment, um, that are able to throw their weight around. And we'll get, I, know, I know we'll get into it a little bit later yeah. in the video, but they're able to throw <clears throat> their weight around. Unfortunately, not just in the market that they're involved in, but they're able to throw their weight around to the extent where it then leaks into actual politics and actual government and the running off states because of the amount of power that that capital that they that they own um, has and in terms of its influence in how this world that we live in uh, works. So yeah, I think people with money making more money. That's well, that, that's I, I, exactly. I no, I agree with that completely. And um, with with everything, we try to look at the pros and cons. I know we're going to dive into the evil that is that we call capitalism. But on this channel, I've tried to keep a positive look on things as well, because everything has a positive and a negative. In my opinion, there's not a lot of positives, but we'll try to dig out a couple if we can. So... I'll start, obviously, you can give me a couple and then I'll share mine. But do you, in your opinion, do you think there's any positive uh, impact from capitalism that we've had as a society or business or economy or whatever you want to, whatever perception you want to look from? Is the, Are there any positives for from capitalism? I think it depends on where you are, on which side of the fence you are in the story. Because if you are not wealthy but you have access to capital capitalism is fantastic the american dream that everybody talks about uh, or part of the american dream i'm not talking about the rapping and the acting and the rest of the the youtube celebrity vibe i'm talking about the 1960s uh, american dream was focused on production people were starting factories um some of the richest people in america um, opened construction businesses because the city and the country was being built at that time. So if you were fortunate enough to be on that side of defense of capitalism, it allowed people to benefit on the growth of a state because the government would say that we want to build a railroad from X to 
uh, to, to be or to do whatever it is. Um, we don't have the capacity to do it, but uh, we will allow a private company to build this railroad for us. And that was an opportunity for the average man to build up their fortune. You needed to be semi-rich or have a capital base or have a bank that looked at you and said, we'll give you a loan. The only way you can get a loan from a bank is if you already have money uh, that they can give you a loan against. No bank gives you a loan if you don't have uh, anything for them to insure that loan against. Um, so yeah, I think for me, reaching, that would be one of the positives I'd say, is that it allowed, it allowed people slightly ab above or below wealthy to then move into that wealthy bracket and create and the, from that you create jobs so creating jobs with those industries would then allow people um, to to lift themselves up from poverty because the average person that's worked that gets a job screwing on toothpaste caps in a factory is not somebody that's coming from a well-off family or from yeah. a financially rich background. So yeah, I think it allowed, it, it did create jobs. Um, it's had, it's the longer it's gone on, it's had a little bit of a, a lot of an adverse effect on the way that- Yeah, uh, which we will speak society. about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but so yeah, I think for me, those those would be the the two positives of, of capitalism. Okay, well, uh, what about you? Can yeah, I'm going to add, I'm just going to bracket everything into one positive. So because the the aim or the motive is profit making and it's profit oriented, it forces businesses and people um, to focus on innovation and creativity. Because if you want the if you want a, an advantage over another business, then you have to be more creative. So we've got a lot of creation, innovation products yeah. that have come that we couldn't even imagine that would have existed like uh, like 20 years ago, right? Technology has, has taken over and that's, I think it's a consequence of capitalism because you want to make quicker profits efficiently by allocation of resources, efficiency. So we're talking about efficiency and, uh, which led to innovation and creation. So from that point of view, it's positive because we've been exposed to all these services and products that makes our lives easier for those of who can afford it. Uh, it. It helps a lot, but obviously, again, like with your point, there's an adverse effect to that, which we should come into. And well, segueing into that, I think we both know that we, there's a lot of issues or problems with capitalism. So let's dig into it uh before we dig into it this is not the first time or we're not the first people on the planet to speak against capitalism it's been happening for centuries like all the way and and like doing some research on the history of capitalism it ex existed a uh, long way before the industrial revolution the world wars there was always this concept of capitalism but now it's just grown and grown and grown and now it's like it's basically how the world runs but my, my point to all of this is that we, we will keep on speaking about it because it's still there. And I think the adverse effects of it is growing as we grow as a society. And even though people have spoken about it before, it's kind of gone a little bit quiet because we don't have slavery anymore and we don't have like the obvious effects that, you know, you can actually pinpoint and see this is like really bad. Obviously, there are many, many factors that are wrong and that are wrong with capitalism. But I guess... A lot of, they've kind of maintained at a, like a flat rate where a lot of people can still benefit from it and a lot of people don't but those people don't have the power to speak out because we're fortunate enough to speak out and we will so Triv let's go for it okay so I'm capitalism and problems of capitalism is an extremely broad thing and every country will have a, a different experience with capitalism yeah uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna speak from my uh, from my experience with what I think is the part the part that made me open my eyes and realize what's going on. So um, before embarking on this teaching phase in my life, I worked for public transport uh, in Cape Town, and public transport is supposed to be 
a non-profit focused uh, branch of go or, or, or service of government rather. Um, when a city grows, um, workers need to be able to travel around from different areas. Quite often, workers can't afford to live in the CBDs because the prices are just too expensive for them to live there. So the only way for you to ensure that workers are able to, um, to keep the production line going is to get them to and from work every day from the farther, uh, further out areas where, um, where they're forced to live uh, because, of, because of rent prices or property prices. And the result of that or, or, or the way to, to, to sort that is public transport. Now, because of government, which we'll get to a, a, a little bit later, public transport has been privatized in South Africa. So you, you alluded earlier to the free market system. Um, so what, what's happened is, is that private companies have been able to come in and say that, say to government that we will run uh, the public service for the, the public transport for you um, in, in Cape Town. And with the moment a private company takes over something like that, it becomes a profit driven um, venture. It's no longer based on the best of the people. It's no longer based on how can we expand the city? How can we grow a country? How can we make sure that the economic and social growth keeps moving in a forward direction? It's not based on that anymore. It's based on a small group of shareholders who sit at the very top of that company that want to make as much, as much profit as humanly possible. And that not, is not necessarily their problem. That is one of the consequences of privatization and of allowing people with capital to then take over important functions, important, what I believe should be state functions uh, like public transport. And then the consequences of, of that would be that, and one of the big cons I think of, of, of capitalism is that now the employees of this public transport system are living below the uh, the minimum wage. Okay, South Africa doesn't even have a minimum wage at this stage, but let's call it a livable wage rather than a minimum wage. And because the industry is so focused on profit at this point in time, it's not geared towards, we mentioned earlier that those factories in America were able to take ordinary people, provide them with jobs and help them lift themselves out. That's not happening anymore. We've moved to a situation now where the capitalist and capitalist greed is forcing them to want more and more and more money. So their goal is to not uplift the people that work for them, that to not uplift the people working in this public transport system. It's just about profits. And it means that only those group of people sitting at the top are moving up and the rest of the people are staying exactly where they are, just about below, maybe in line with that livable wage. And because of the power that they have, if, if they say, okay, we're not going to do this, government don't have an option because that public transport is essential for growth, for the growth of South Africa. So they've now got our, our government in a vice grip. And I think the overwhelming um, sadness for me with that is that it then undermines democracy because we're voting for a government that are then that we believe have our best interests in heart and let's for a, for a second be completely foolish and believe that the people that we're voting for actually care about the people in the country uh, the ANC don't but that's a different thing for us to get into uh, so let's think that let's believe and lie to ourselves that somebody like Cyril actually cares about the citizens in, in, in South Africa. Okay, so for, sorry, I just need to stop. You you have to yeah. just, lo, some of the viewers might not know, ANC is the, the political party that runs South ah. Africa and Cyril Ramaphosa is the president. Sorry, continue. Sorry, just, yeah. So so let's say that they the ANC and Cyril do want to do the best thing uh, for the public. Their hands are then tied because the people that run public transport uh, have all of the power because they now control public transport because the government cannot provide that service to the people. So when decisions are then made about something like coronavirus and 
is it wise for us to be running a bus full of people during this? Should we be asking uh, the bus company to run two buses on a route at half capacity instead of a single bus at full capacity, which then doubles the cost for that private company, but halves the risks for the average human being sitting on that bus? They say no. Because at the end of the day, they're worried about profit. Yeah, and then yeah, that yeah. then undermines democracy because government then, their hands are tied. They're not making a decision that's best for you and I. They're making a decision that they're forced to make because if they don't, the buses don't run at all. Uh, and that's just uh, like obviously a very um, singled out view on public transport itself. But I think that applies but, to yeah, a lot of different yeah. functions. You know what? I'm going to take what you just said and summarize it. And just say it causes, uh, let me know if I'm, if you agree with it, but the rich get richer, right? That's what yeah. capitalism is, right? And what you've described with the public transport industry is that those people, shareholders, don't care about their employees and they only care about profit and maximizing profits. So that the distribution of income gets larger and larger and the economic gap grows. And also, just to add to that point, with terms of inequality, is the wealth stays within the family right so if i have rich parents it's going to be passed on to me and we can take a really good example of donald trump who apparently only had one million from his dad to start off his businesses and whatever you think about donald trump whether he's a good or a bad businessman but even if he was the worst businessman in the world if you have that much wealth it's almost impossible to lose it because yeah you always have security with your assets and then like a lot of those assets appreciate in value you can sell them off you can get interest off them so the the rich most of the time stay richer and then it's very difficult for middle class or lower middle class or even people who are completely on the poverty line or below the poverty line to come up because of what you just mentioned giving a really good example of the public transport industry in south africa and here's a statistics for you that proves all of the points we're just speaking about is that the half of the world's wealthiest people, half, that's 50% of the wealth, belongs to 1% of the population. And that just shows you the un inequality and the, of the distribution of wealth and income. And that has increased over the years. So if you look back, it wasn't as big and it keeps on growing. So yeah, that is one of the biggest cons of, of capitalism. And unfortunately, it's going to continue unless we make a change. The nature of it is to re is, is just profits. There's nothing else. So firms will tend to focus on profits and they're going to disregard everything else. The environment, the employees, the social well-being of society. Now, I'm not saying all businesses do that, but most of them do. If you take like the the carbon dioxide emissions and or, or anything that negatively impacts the environment and you go trace it back to the companies that are producing those harmful chemicals you'll see they're the biggest companies in the world that make the most money so coming back to you Triv, is there anything else that you don't like about capitalism i know there's plenty but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, 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 I don't like i don't like the entire the entire concept of it um i think the the, the main the main issue for me is that you may I so greed that word that word greed like during this pandemic um, when companies have put pressure on governments to open during South Africa is in the middle of a third wave and we can't afford to go into a lockdown because the people that bear the brunt of a lockdown are the people that need the money the most we cannot yep. the average south african i would say 95 percent of south africans cannot afford to not get a wage every week um and i think that that greed is it's it's almost it's, it's almost like a sickness because if a company agrees to pay 30% of their workers' salary, they will make less profit. Okay, I'm not talking about all companies, I'm talking about the big, massive, um, the massive companies, the listed companies. Them paying workers 30% for three weeks to flatten the curve, it's not gonna put them out of business. It's just something that they would refuse to do 
because it doesn't reflect well on share, uh, to their shareholders. The yeah. CEOs don't have don't have the balls to stand up and say that I'm like you said I'm going to put society first. I think that greed is sick. It's absolutely sick. It genuinely makes me ill to think about the fact that somebody's sitting there and saying, "Nah, I want seven yachts. I'm not happy with four. So make these idiots go to work so that we can get the the three more." And, and that that that's the, the word, right? idiot sorry i actually want to emphasize on that word because i would i'll call us the people have been lied to or or <clears throat> given all this theory about you know capitalism neoliberalism and you get paid for hard work or for um for you're getting paid what you're valued that's completely bullshit you you can't tell me the ceo uh, who gets paid a million let's say a million dollars a year Uh, and uh, 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 that's a financial manager getting paid a hundred thousand a year. You're not telling me that the CEO's value is ten times more than that that manager or another employee is getting paid even lower. So another, I think for me, a setback is capitalism does not pay you what you're worth. So it's capital versus labor, right? Exploiting workers to make products that we don't even actually need. I know we talk about the, I talked about these this pro of you know bringing efficiency in product and innovation. Now you tell me what is actually the purpose of an Apple Watch? Do you really need that? It costs an arms and a leg, but everyone's buying it because they have the marketing they they play on your psychological um the human psychology. They do a lot of research on that. You know how humans react to certain things and they use that as their advantage to bring products that we don't need it's a want there's a massive difference between a want and a need yeah okay our lives get more comfortable it's easier but then what you're doing is you you're exploiting workers to make products that we don't need and then everyone's losing out on that except for that 1% to make the money yeah you're speaking about uh, about exploiting workers and i saw a really interesting uh tweet on on social media or twitter this morning follow us all uh handles are in the description um and it spoke about the fact that uh one of capitalism's greatest tricks is by convincing people that immigrants are taking their jobs um and people now that, hate yeah. immigrants um when in fact capitalists are exploiting immigrants for cheap labor that so they're saving money on their salaries on their wages and that they're making you not hate them for pay, for not being willing to pay you what you're worth they're making you hate the immigrants exactly. because they have to take less money so that they can have food to eat it's but that's, it's that that goes back to human sick. psychology right they know how humans will work how they react Uh, like these people are rich yes they they're evil but they're also smart they know what they're doing yeah. and they know how to do it they play on people's emotions and that that's how they make money which is for me it's sickening so Trev, we've discussed in in length about how bad it is my next question which is i guess a question everyone will be or should be asking is where do we go from here if not capitalism is there another way is, is capitalism should we just move away from it completely or can it be improved in a better way is there another way to to implement this this concept we've had for generations yeah okay so i want to start by reading uh, a definition okay so socialism a political and economic theory of social organization which advocates that the means of production distribution and exchange should be owned or regulated by the community as a whole okay now socialism has failed as well uh socialism failed in israel socialism failed in the uk and the soviet the, the big one the soviet union um yeah and socialism is, has failed Commun- um uh capitalism is well, i believe failing well it's not failing the 1% it's failing the rest of us um yeah. i believe that the problem doesn't lie and it's probably going to go against this video with what i'm saying the problem doesn't lie with capitalism the problem lies with the lack of accountability that governments have across the world to its people so if i look at south africa right now one of the biggest problems is that 
the government cannot provide basic services. And that has created this massive hole for capitalism to grow and fester and turn into what it is today. The amount of money that South Africans pay for data, for data, it's ridiculous. It is mind blowing. Yeah. South Africans, if you leave the country, go anywhere else and see what people are playing for data, are paying for data. Data is free. It is imaginary. Once you put up the tower, there is no cost after that. Mm. They are charging Vodacom and MTN and Celsi. They 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 have this ridiculous monopoly that was created because government do not regulate them. The government either don't regulate them or the government are getting money from these from the from these industries to it's not It's the latter. Them. It's the latter. It happens everywhere. Like yeah, I know and- this is going to sound like a conspiracy theory, but um, most people oh, well, governments do have control. I'm not saying they're completely out of control, but the people that actually run government decisions are not the actual politicians. I think they're the wealthy businessmen in the background because without them, the government will not will collapse because they need their financial power. You know, all these campaigns that they have, who do you think sponsors them? They, not every government official is rich as hell, right? They get sponsored by all these businesses and they have all the, they will tell the government to enforce certain policies that will benefit them. And then if you do that for us, we're going to run your campaign. We'll sponsor your campaign. We're going to go out to Facebook, hijack data and make everyone believe that you're doing the right thing. If you haven't watched that documentary, you know which one I'm talking about, but yeah. So th- that is quite a big part. Sorry, uh, you were saying about the government. Just could, yeah, yeah, I just wanted so, to add that. So you, asked, so you asked about, so what what system do, do can we possibly go to um, yeah. that's better than the one that we, that we, have, in, that we have right now? Look, um, communism is an, extreme, uh, is an extreme thing. And I think a lot of people still link that or link socialism to the way that China operates as um, as a country. And I think I think a lot of people need to do a little bit more research into uh, how it is that China have taken themselves forward in the last 50, 60 years. Um, the free market does exist in China, and there's this concept that it doesn't. But this free market does exist here to a point when somebody starts to become wealthy beyond reasonable measure, they're yeah. then kept. It happened to Jack Ma fairly recently and he went missing and there was a whole bunch of conspiracy theories about it and stuff like that. And um, Jack Ma reached a level where it was the story by capitalists was that they're worried that he's going to have more money than the Chinese government. Maybe. Maybe, maybe that's one way to look at it. The other yeah. way to look at it is somebody sat at the very top of the Chinese government and went, hold on, this is not beneficial to the people in this country. The wealth sitting in the top 1% doesn't benefit the people in this country. So we're going to put a cap on that wealth. And I think that, I think, I think capitalism and, a free, and the free market system is a good thing. I don't think it's a bad thing. I think like we mentioned yeah. at the start, I think it gives, it sparks creativity. It gives people a chance um to to create something of their own and to to build industry and to build uh, and to build their legacies but if it's unregulated that greed festers and go- I, th- I believe governments need to be stronger um and make sure that wealth generation in the private sector at no point trumps the social well-being of the people in the country and i think i think that's what i think the system needs to be leveled out to and where that balance needs to be uh needs to be found how about you yeah no i agree with that and what, what you mentioned last i'm just going to quick on it because we're running out of time is uh balance and you know i have mentioned balance a lot because i believe it's one of my main fundamental principles of living your life is to balance everything same with capitalism like you said that there are positives to it and we can still work in a capitalistic environment. But like you said, it has to be regulated. It has to 
more awareness for the environment, the social dynamics of, of societies need to be implemented. And I'm going to just end with this, right? And because I completely agree with you, I don't think there's one, you know, dominant system that should be implemented and that will work, you know, and it's going to solve all of the world's problems. And that's, that's not what we're talking about. Here. It's impossible. I don't think there's a perfect system. So we have to take bits and pieces of all these concepts and theories and make it into something that can benefit everyone. But I just want to leave the video with this, that it isn't capital that makes the economy. It's the people. And I think that gets forgotten a lot. Without people, you're not going to produce shit. You're not going to provide the services. And it doesn't matter how rich you are. If you don't have the manpower or the skills or the brains behind it, you're not going to further your business or the economy as a whole. If there are any big businesses uh, out there, Jeff Bezos, if you're watching this, <laughs> stop exploiting your workers. Treat them well. You already have a gazillion dollars. I think you sh you, you're good enough now, right? I don't think you need more money. But my point is that people need to be taken care of. And that's how we're going to come to somewhat equal society um yeah but i'm gonna leave it there if trip you don't have anything to add thank you so much for coming on i do, I, uh, I do want to add one thing yeah sure um, Go for it. my fellow south africans to steal a line from our president please stay safe i know south africa is in the middle of a really bad third wave um with the delta variant so yeah um i hope everybody's staying safe masks stay inside sanitize uh, don't do stupid things, please. And stay safe. Thanks, Trev. That's brilliant. And even if you're not in South Africa, anywhere else you are in the world, stay safe, be smart, be vigilant. And yeah, uh, take care, everyone. Until next time, uh, please don't forget, subscribe, like, share. And if you want to come on the channel, all our information is in the description. Get in touch with us. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and of course, YouTube. So till next time, take care. Bye-bye.